Before we get in the video, please like, make sure to subscribe, turn on your notifications, go ahead and leave a comment below. And click on the how you can help, which brings up the Family for the Game website and gives you lots of ideas how you can help us. Thank you. Hey everybody, Paul Burry, Family from the Gaming. This is an effigy politics on the Second Amendment. Let's read what the Second Amendment actually states. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. End of story. Period. That's it. So you have people going, well, you can't have this gun, you can't have that gun. That's actually violating the Second Amendment. So they are unconstitutional whenever they say you can't have whatever weapons because it says right there, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Not only that, but I will start looking up quotes of the Founding Fathers. And you can go look this up yourself. Uh, the Federalist Papers. Dot, uh, org has this. A free people ought not only be armed but disciplined. George Washington, in the first annual address to both House of Congress, January 8th, 1790. All right? He's definitely a founding father, the first president we've ever had. No free man shall ever be debarred the use of arms. Thomas Jefferson, in the Virginia Constitution Draft 1, 1776. I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. Thomas Jefferson, letter to James Madison, January 30th, 1787. So you see right there, he's, he's acknowledging that it can be dangerous to have a lot of people with guns because some people are going to be irresponsible. But he'd rather have that than slavery because that's what he says you will get if you have a population without guns. All right? So, so the Founding Fathers fought against the British Empire. And this is one of the things they fought for for us to have this right so if you ever have you know any kind of politician being like oh well you know we, we have these shootings and that we just need to stop everything we need to, to take the guns from people because of the shootings you, you outlaw guns only the outlaws are going to have guns that's been a common phrase and it's a true phrase and it's been proven throughout the world you sit there and take it away then the criminals know there's no one who can fight back they keep their guns and they go attack people so that's one of the logical reasons why you actually need it and you know, my heart goes out to anyone who's been part of any kind of a shooting, whether it was the D.C. sniper or um, one of the school shootings. You know, I found it interesting. Those, those two kids in Columbine who went on a murdering spree, they broke 19 laws in Colorado. 19 laws. Do you know what the, the politicians did? They passed two more laws. So guess what? The next school shooter broke 21 laws. The laws did not stop them. The laws, you know, I think what we need to focus on is what will actually fix the problem. And that probably should be a different video. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reel myself in and just, just stick on the Second Amendment. Um, what country can preserve its liberties if their rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of resistance? Let them take arms. Thomas Jefferson, letter to James Madison, December 20th, 1787. So all people freaking out over different little uh, you know, insurrections that happen or uh, angry outbursts by uh, protesters and whatnot. He's even pointing this out that the government needs to be reminded. And, and look how the government reacted. I mean, the government didn't really care when BLM and Antifa was, was just murdering a bunch of police officers and murdering a bunch of innocent people and burning down businesses. But when it came to their back door, all of a sudden it's like, hey, you need to stop this. You know? We need to take everyone's guns because of this. Not that there was a whole lot of shootings there, but uh, okay. Um, the laws that forbid the carrying of arms are laws of such nature. They disarm only those who are neither inclined nor determined to commit crime. Such laws make things worse for the assaulted and better for the assailant. They serve rather to encourage them to prevent homicides for an unarmed man may be attacked with a greater confidence than an armed man, Thomas Jefferson. Commonplace book quoting 18th century criminologist Cesar Beccario, 1774 to 1776. Again, 
This is kind of like what we talked about. I love guns. I'm like, I was going to have guns. The founding fathers knew this. They comprehended this reality. They, they knew. Ah, here's a great one. Here's a great founding father quote. They that can give up essential liberty to obtain a, te a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Benjamin Franklin, Historical Review of Pennsylvania, 1759. He's pointing out that, you know, you don't deserve it. If you're, if you're going to sit there and steal people's guns, you're not going to deserve this. Now, I do believe in people being responsible with their guns. I think it's, it's very intelligent to make sure that, you know, you would try to keep them on the hands of criminals, those who are mentally ill. And I mean really mentally ill, not people trying to redefine mental illness to try to stop, you know, patriotic people from owning them. Because that's what, that's what you'll see happen, and they'll, they'll try to infringe upon it. But then I guess it goes into what it actually says, what the Second Amendment actually says is no infringement. So, you know, any infringement violates the Constitution, and people who have done any infringement have violated the Constitution. Now... One of the things I look at is, is kind of not only just what all the Founding Fathers said, but what, what was the, the intent? The intent was to remind the government that they're not all power for all seeing and they can't just abuse their power. And we have seen a lot of government uh, abuse of power. Uh, what we've seen in the Clinton administration when he went in and murdered those people in Waco. We've seen it in the Obama administration. Um, I'm sure we'll see it in the, uh, the Biden administration as well. The government needs to be reminded they can't just, you know, whip us all and, and treat us all like criminals and, and, you know, murderers and thieves when we've never done any of those crimes. They need to act like we're not third class citizens. We're actually people that are, they are supposed to be, supposed to be serving us, but they're not. So the way I've always looked at the Second Amendment is it's not just guns. It's an equality of the people and government. So government and people need to be equal. All right. Now, what I mean by that is, if the government has this kind of weapon, so can the people. And and if it's if it's unequal, if the government can have this and we the people can't, then we're getting into the situation that is a direct violation of the Second Amendment and what the founding fathers said. So, and you go, well, wait a minute. You know, does that mean you should be allowed to have a nuclear weapon if the government's got it? much as I don't want one personally, and I'm more afraid of the radiation, the government's got tanks, and they sit there and go, oh, you can't have tanks. Well, they can have it. The government can have these assault rifles, and these, these uh, machine guns. Why can't we? You can't buy them. It's, it's got to be equal. So the amendment, ha the amendment, the second amendment references that, that there's an equality there between government and people, and the Founding Fathers had a lot of writings to, to prove this. And if you don't, like I say, if you don't believe me, go look up the federalistpapers.org has a lot of information on it, has even more, I mean, I just touched on a few of the quotes. There are a ton more quotes about it. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.